all renewable energy has always been sort of like yas queen, while nuclear and fossil fuels has sort of been like no thanks fam. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today is a heavy, heavy one. This is going to cause some controversy and rile some feathers probably, but I also think this is super, super interesting, which is why I actually wanted to talk about it. We're going to talk about nuclear power. And this was something that I did not know a ton about, or perhaps my opinion of nuclear power has been very, very, very affected by Chernobyl, the event and the HBO series. <laughs> and recently I was on the Danish radio talking about sustainable power options and we talked about nuclear power. And for that interview, I did quite a lot of research. I thought it could be fun to talk about this also because whenever you try and research or when you watch something or listen to something about sustainable energy, more and more often nuclear power is included and there is a lot of sustainability activism out there that is favoring nuclear energy. But I have honestly for the longest time just been in my own bubble with my wind powered energy supplier and not given any other option a second thought. So I thought it could be cool to venture into this together and sort of learn more about this issue. So let's do that. Why is it that nuclear energy has been included in debates and discussions about sustainable energy? And why are we not only looking at renewable energy like wind and solar and hydrotechnics? The usual critiques of renewable energy is often that they are not as dependable and static as many other or certain other uh, energy solutions, which is why they are not necessarily fitted at this moment in time to cater to a large consumer and industry demand of energy. And as we move forward into the future, um, as we have been doing for quite some time, the average consumer and industry demand for electricity is only increasing and we are becoming more and more dependent upon electricity. So in order for those demands to be met, we need energy that is completely dependable. And for obvious reasons like weather, not all renewable sources are that dependable, which is why some people are talking about nuclear in the first place. So that is also just something that I've sort of like seen. There are also people who are talking about how some places in the world, some countries do not have the capacity spatial wise to expand into renewable energy or to be more dependent on renewable energy, which is also a place in which the nuclear industry steps in. But let's talk a little bit about electricity. Carbon dioxide emissions related to energy consumptions has continued to rise with a record of 33.1 billion tons emissions released in 2018. Actually, carbon emissions have increased by more than 40% since 2002. And in 2017, fossil fuels produced more electricity than ever before. So, how the heck? So I want to explain to you exactly how nuclear energy creates electricity. Okay. From what I have gathered, nuclear energy creates electricity by splitting atoms. When you split atoms apart, there's an awful lot of energy that's released. In the core of the nuclear reactors, neutrons collide with uranium atoms, which then causes a reaction that splits them apart. The energy that is released from these atoms are then used to boil some water and like make it really, really hot, like 520 degrees Fahrenheit hot. Yeah, the hot water turns into steam, which is then used to spin some turbines connected to a generator and that generator then creates electricity. So the moving agent in the electricity making in nuclear power is more is more steam related and less uranium related but uranium is the fuel that is used to create the steam in the first place or the fuel that is used to uh, make water really really hot so that is was that at all like an explanation anyone could use for anything because i'm so sorry if it wasn't <laughs> i'm doing my best so the first pro let's talk about the advantages is low carbon emissions Compared to fuels like gas and coal, aka fossils, nuclear power has the lowest carbon footprint. 
That is because we don't use fossil materials as a fuel to make the electricity, aka no CO2 emissions and no methane emissions. A misconception about nuclear power is often that the giant amount of smoke that comes from the towers is smoke or pollution, when in fact it's actually steam, it's vaporized water. And that is what comes out of the towers, they're cooling towers, and they do not emit pollution. Another advantage is the high power output. Nuclear energy has a really, really high fuel to power ratio, where just a very small amount of uranium can power a huge nuclear power plant that can produce energy for over half a million people. I just kind of said this, but let's say it again. Another advantage of nuclear power is that you don't need any fossil fuels to make it work. Nuclear energy do not rely on fossil fuels, the extraction of which comes with massive environmental impacts. Fossil fuels emit both methane and CO2, and methane is 20 times more potent than CO2. It's a greenhouse gas we just do not want. The thing is, it's not going to be here forever. So being dependent on a resource like fossil fuels is a really bad idea and unsustainable, both in terms of climate and uh, environmentalism, but also in terms of like the economical aspect of it. Being dependent on something that's going to go away at some point is just not viable for a like global society as a whole. So being dependent upon that is kind of like, no. Then there is the spatial capacity. This is something that I actually did not know, but a nuclear power plant needs much, much less space than both coil, coil? <laughs> than both coal and gas and renewable energy sources. Solar and wind-powered energy requires 40 to 50 times more space than coal and over 100 times more space than gas. And solar and wind power requires between 75 to 150 times more space than nuclear energy. A lot of occupied space can mean a lot of different things, by the way, because occupied space can mean loss of natural habitats and loss of biodiversity. But on the other hand, you can also utilize space that wouldn't otherwise be used for a lot of things like rooftop, solar panels, or you can install windmills both out at sea or in fields where agriculture is taking up a lot of land anyway. And I definitely see a lot of innovation in that field and I think that's something we have to keep pursuing because there are so many advantages to renewable energy and the occupational space shouldn't necessarily be a disadvantage in the regard that we should stop doing it because of it. I hope you see my point. Also, there was a Danish CEO from a nuclear innovation company that actually said that because in Denmark we have such amazingly good conditions for renewable energy, it wouldn't make sense for Denmark to go heavy head on in a purse first into nuclear energy. But other countries or other places in the world might have different conditions that would make it easier or make it more sustainable or generally just have it make more sense. I hope that, you know, I not every country has to go purse first into the nuclear energy field. That's just all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, to sum it all up, some of the advantages from a nuclear energy is space. It doesn't require a lot of space. Another advantage is the high power output. It doesn't require a lot of materials to make a lot of power. That can be a good thing. And lastly, there are no carbon emissions, which gets us clean air, and that is generally healthier also in urban spaces, and less emissions. That's all nice. But what are some of the disadvantages? Because I have also things to say here. <laughs> First of all, I think this is something that we have to mention before anything else, but uranium as a power source, where fossil fuels is not an abundant material, but something we will end up having to solve. Like that's a problem that we will have to solve at some point when we run out of fossil fuels and fossil materials. The same thing will actually happen with uranium. Uranium might be kind of abundant now, but several experts have stated that we only have around 80 years worth left of uranium. So not that abundant, it seems. So building tons of plants that are dependent upon uranium might not be the best idea either. Also just really wanted to add that building something that requires a lot of concrete and nuclear plants they do, especially like the, um, the cooling towers require a lot of concrete and concrete comes with its very own intense carbon footprint. So building a lot of stuff with concrete that might not be useful for a very long time, I'm not there for that. But 
On the upside, there are plants and innovation companies that are working with other kinds of nuclear fuels, such as thorium and salt. That could definitely solve a lot of problems in terms of abundant fuel sources, as uranium is not going to be here forever. Mining, I just really wanted to talk about this as well. It's always a disadvantage if you need to mine something to make something work. And I've talked about mining, I think in almost all of my impact videos, but whenever you mine something, whatever that may be, you will end up destroying habitat and you will end up hurting biodiversity. So I think that is always something that we have to consider. If we can find a solution where mining is not necessary, I'm always up for that. And I think this is one of the more common problems or commonly known problems, but it's waste. There is a lot of nuclear radioactive waste from producing energy in nuclear plants. An average nuclear power plant produces around 20 metric tons of radioactive waste every single year. And that waste has to be stored away for a very long time. And as far as I know, we don't actually have any good long-term storage solutions. So what most plants are doing is that they are storing the nuclear waste in safe above ground storage units until we can find a long-term solution. One of the main problems with nuclear waste is that it can potentially be very dangerous and it takes a long time for nuclear waste to decompose to a state of moderate safety. It can take thousands of years for radioactive waste to not be unsafe anymore. And in the meantime, we just have to cross our fingers. There won't be any leaks or natural disasters that might damage the storage containers. I don't like the sound of that at all. <laughs> Lastly, there's time. It takes a long time to build a nuclear power plant. And the thing is, we kind of need solutions and innovations now. And a power plant takes an average of 10 years to build. And that is simply just too long. So we cannot be solely dependent on something that we can make work in about 10, 15 years time. We also need to work on innovational options when it comes to energy that we can use now, tomorrow, yesterday. God. Damn it. Some innovators are researching how to make renewable energy more static and dependable, while other researchers are trying to figure out how to produce nuclear energy with less radioactive waste. And from where I'm standing, it seems like we kind of need both of these things to happen simultaneously. Then we also need to discuss safety. I cannot talk about nuclear power without also including this aspect, and I guess a lot of you are wondering about it as well. So there has been quite a few accidents and incidents where something has gone wrong. And generally my impression of nuclear power is that if something goes wrong, it really goes wrong. I don't have time to summarize all the accidents, so here is a quick gist of it. In history, there has been quite a few accidents, some of them leading to casualties, some of them leading to radiation poisoning and cancers. The latter have affected thousands of people. But as far as I could gather, it's not the best idea to get all your information about nuclear power from an HBO show or even from old history books. But there are actually also some risks when it comes to nuclear energy that the industry itself are very aware of. One of which being power plants as a target for terrorism, which would be very bad. There's also the notion that nuclear power plants and earthquakes don't necessarily mix super well as we saw in Fukushima and other places as well. And I've seen several articles mention that one of the risks with nuclear power plants is that we are going to see more and more extreme weather as we progress through climate change and that is not only uh, earthquakes, that's also fires and floods and droughts and um, hurricanes and any kind of natural condition that is going to become more extreme will be a very bad thing if that happens near a nuclear power plant which needs water and stability and that's really hard to get doing droughts and hurricanes. A former member of the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission also said a world more reliant on nuclear power would involve many plants in countries that have little experience with nuclear energy, no regulatory background in the field and some questionable records on quality control, safety and corruption. And this would most likely lead to quite a few accidents in the nuclear field. 
My verdict, I can definitely see the point when we are talking about the advantages of nuclear power. So I wouldn't necessarily simply just completely refuse it. Like CO2 emissions, generally clean air, high power output, stuff like that. I can definitely see the pros, the advantages, but we can so not overlook the waste management issue, which we have not under control whatsoever. No. And every time I've tried to find a site that talks about the advantages and the disadvantages of nuclear power, it seems like the waste management issue is this tiny, tiny little thing. From an environmentalist point of view, simply storing super, super toxic waste for thousands of years is not a viable solution. So until we can figure out how to produce nuclear energy without this waste i am so not on board like i'm not completely on board but i definitely see the advantages and i don't think it hurts to innovate in that field i don't think we should simply just unsubscribe for good we need innovation as we do with renewable energy as well but i'm going to stick with my solar powered and wind powered energy supplier Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. That would make my day. And if you haven't, please subscribe. I make tons of videos like this and other kinds of videos as well. So I would love to see you here again. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!